Hello, this is Dylan Anderson from Coda Bears. Today I'll be covering Epicor REST using OData and BAQs in version 10.2.600. So up here on my screen is the active homepage, aka Kinetic homepage for the version 10.2.600. And the first thing that I did was create a BAQ that we are going to be using in this demonstration. So I'll quickly show you my BAQ and you can get to the business activity query screen by going to the Epicor menu here and then going to system management, business activity queries, and then you'll have the business activity query option here. I actually already have my BAQ loaded and opened in that window. And my query ID, I called it LL customer for lunch and learn customer. And then on my query builder here, I'm only using one table the ERP.customer table just for this demonstration and the display fields. I pulled all the fields that I wanted for this video. Um, you can use as many tables and as many fields as you want for your project. And then analyze. I do come over to analyze and I did test it and I was able to get rows back. So now we're going to quickly jump over to the Epicor RESTful Services page and I'm going to show you basically how to call this BAQ from the Epicor REST API using a web browser. So to get to the Epicor REST API it's always HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then your server name in my case it's dev-10 to 600 forward slash the instance name. Um, again, in my situation, it's Ethan Train, but yours might be Ethan Pilot, Ethan Prod, Ethan Test, whatever you are working with today. And then forward slash API forward slash help, and then I'll bring me. Once I hit enter, it wants me to sign in to access this site. So it's asking for a username and password. That username and password is going to be the user account inside of Epicor that you are using for your project. So in my case, for the training environment, it's Epicor, Epicor. So I'll click on sign in. And then once I've signed in to the REST API, I'll have a lot of helpful documentation here about the REST API and basically how to use it, um, the different types of method calls and stuff that you can use. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of collapse this. You can collapse it by clicking on that header. So here we have a bunch of different service lists for like business objects, um, libraries that Epicor uses, uh, processes, so like your labor posting. Um, RPT is like your report, so when somebody like runs the sales order acknowledgement, there's a REST API to actually trigger running like a sales order acknowledgement. And then business activity queries, which is the section we are going to focus on today. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Once I click on that, it opens up um, all kinds of information for how to call a BAQ through the REST API. So you could read this if you want to. It's uh, very helpful if you do. I personally have some experience working with it and I'm going to show you how to use these fields down here. So the first thing that you can use is company, it's optional, uh, but we're going to go ahead and put a company since this is a multi-company environment, I want to use only one particular company and that's going to be Epic06 as the owning company and then my query ID is LL customer. So with those two things in mind, I'm going to come back over to this page, company, Epic06 and then LL customer and then I'll click on get help and as you notice here when I typed LL customer um, it's it kinda is filtering for what PAQs already exist in the system under Epic 06 um, and I could just click on LL customer to get rid of that or if I meant something else I could have clicked on one of the LL, uh, other um, options I had there so now I'll click on get help and this is gonna bring me to another page this is the Epicor REST API uh, version 1 swagger page. They do call this piece of software here Swagger, as you can see up here. Um, and basically that is a, a tool that breaks down, you know, the different methods you can call with the REST API as well as giving you some extended information to your call. So um, execute BAQ, this is the one I'm going to want. If I click on that and scroll down here, it gives me some example. Uh, it gives me the parameters that I can use. Select, filter, order by, top, skip, and like count. So for the top, I'm just going to go ahead and put five. And basically adding five here will select the top five records, kind of like how you do a select top five in SQL. Uh, if you are used to writing SQL queries, this is kind of similar. Filter, Again, I can I can add a filter, so I could do like company equals Epic06, um, but since I did that on the Get Help page, it's actually going to show me um, where it is incorporated 
as you can see here at the at the top is my is the URL. It's already incorporating Epic 06. So I don't really have to add a filter for that, but if I wanted to filter by a customer name inside of that uh, URL, I could. So if I just added top five, it's going to select the top five records and then I'll click try it out. Clicking this try it out button runs that REST call for you and gives you even more uh, information. So you could use curl if you um, have knowledge on curl or, or you might want to look at and research up more into that but I'm just going to basically show you in this demonstration just the basics you know how to work this uh, Epicor REST BAQ help page as well as you know how to make this call from like a web browser directly. So as you notice I have a request URL so this is the exact URL that I'm going to use. So if you notice here it's got our server name, our environment name, forward slash API, forward slash the version, version 1 and 102600 and starting like 1023 I think um, we have a version 2 as well. Version 2 incorporates some other things that aren't actually in version 1 like Epicor functions if you've heard about those. Um, it's definitely something to check out. Um, and then slash BAQ service, so this is like our, our service, what are we accessing here, the BAQ service portion of the REST API. And then forward slash, so this is our BAQ ID, and then in parentheses it put our company in there for us from that previous help page that we are, we're on to get to the swagger. And then forward slash, this is how it kind of shows us using our parameters. It, we could, if we use multiple different parameters, it would it would add it all to this request URL after clicking the try it out. So if I actually copy this request URL, um, as you can see in my response body here, I started getting some customer data. But if I copy this URL, put it in a web browser, you can use the same URL in your code or your project you're working on, and this is basically how it uh, returns. So this is actually in JSON format. And that's just like a, a file format. It'd be you you would be able to put this in like a .json suffixed file, um, but it's a very common format that they use over the web and, and for APIs. Um, and a big reason is that a lot of websites on the front end are in now starting back end since Node.js got released uh, a while back. A lot of JavaScript natively supports JSON format. It doesn't really support XML format. That was always kind of a Windows thing. So as you can see, I got customer underscore company, customer ID, and customer name, stuff like that. So if I put in here customer underscore cust ID, comma customer underscore name, and click try it out, and scroll down, you'll notice that I got the top five customer records and only the fields customer ID and customer name. That will conclude my lunch and learn today on using the Epicor REST API on basically how to call a BAQ using OData. Thanks for watching.